Today on Dudes That Grow panel, let's learn to hunt that perfect pheno. You know, what traits are you growing for? We got yield, THC. Do we just want to see a bunch of crystals? It all starts <laughs> with picking that perfect pack, and then you want to pick out that perfect pheno. So, welcome. What's Hello, up, man. Scotty? I love it when you say crystals. Hang on, let's, let's ask the panel, man. Does anyone still say crystals? Rasta Jeff? <laughs> Brad from Raw, what's up, guys? Yeah, man, people still say crystals, right? They're shiny, <laughs> right? Trichomes, man, trichrome. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. that one too. Yeah, I like it when they chrome it up too. That's my favorite. Yeah, put a B on the end of it too. Mm, yeah, what's up, boys? Good. Well, man, how you doing today? Proper intros, man. A uh, Brad Raw Genetics. What's up, brother? Just chilling, man. Hanging out. Glad to take a break and kick it with the boys. Yeah, West Coast, right? L.A.? Yes, sir. LA All Metro, day, every day. They call it? L.A. Metro. I think that's uh, that's probably a music producer. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Yeah? He said, I don't, I've heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we're in, yeah. out in the L.A. area. Very cool. Very cool, man. I read genetics. You are as south in Colorado as you can get, man. Yeah, bro. I'm down here in southern Colorado hanging out, taking a break with the boys, roll up some weed and get high. It's very cool. I like that. I'm going to use that in a song. I heard that man. somewhere. <laughs> no, nah, this was cool, man. Me and dude were talking. He was telling me about the pheno hunt because, man, you had a lot of different phenos of the orange gasm, didn't you, dude? Four different ones going, all uh, one from a clone from a buddy, three from seed, and learned a bit about each one. So it's like, hey, let's talk to the experts, as you said, and figure out tips on picking out, you know, it can come from trimmability, plant structure, smell strength, plant bigger. There's all kinds of things to look at, especially if you're trying to pick a pheno you know you're going to continue to work with. You know, these grows just don't go overnight. They take three, four months at times. So you want to have some good quality stuff, not bringing you problems. What do you guys consider a pheno hunt? I mean, J.R. Token got that cherry paloma on one seed, didn't he? It was something crazy like that, wasn't it? He didn't hunt very half. He didn't have to look too far. He had uh, a little bit of winning the lottery moment there. Kind of feels like that's sure. a sign of real good genetics. That's what that is. Strong uh, genes. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, what is a pheno hunt to you all, though, man? Is it getting a pack of ten pack of seeds? That would be a pheno hunt. I think technically, looking at more than one seed is more than one pheno. So I think you could consider that to be the smallest hunt you could do is just more than one. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's all the way up to whatever you can stomach and, you know, afford to fit into your uh, financial strategies. <laughs> I like that approach. A lot of people think uh, that a pheno hunt has to be extravagant, 100 seeds. For us, for Brad and I, it would ideally, probably 100 seeds is a good run, but it does not have to be that. Brad's absolutely correct. A pack, a five pack, a 10 pack, a six pack. Uh, that's your pheno hunt. Do what's in your means. Don't try to overdo yourself. Yeah. And with all the good breeders, if, if it's a breeder that you're finding at a reputable vendor, you're going to find a keeper in a pack. whatever pack we sell you. We're confident that that pack's got a keeper. That's why we sell that many in a pack, or that's at least why I do. So you six, I'm sure you'll find a keeper in a pack of six in the FEMS. It is, as far as, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll get into that later. I want you to teach me a little bit later just how to, I guess we can get into it now, man. Oh, it's, go over it. Yeah, there's different uh, when I'm reading the codes in the seed bank or in the seed catalog, there's some that are telling me that it's going to be super stable, right? There's some codes that are telling me that uh, uh, you'll get what's pretty much on the package or they worked really hard for you to get what's on the package. And then there's others that you're really looking for, uh, you know, where you can go unicorn hunting, I'll say. Would y'all explain that to me? We're both trying to be want to take Go, uh, yeah, yeah just add a bunch of <laughs> too many polite podcasters here. Um, so, um, when you go, so I'll start with the uh, the regular seeds. This is reg seeds. When you do regular seeds, generally the F one is when you take uh, that's that is when you take two new plants and cross them together. So we'll say golden right. and daybreaker. You breed them together. The first time those uh, meet up and make seeds, that those seeds are F one. Those are going to show a lot of phenotypes that look like. Uh, just like a mix of the two plants together, but then you'll see some that look like mom and some that look like dad. And there'll be a small percentage that are just weirdos that look like uh, maybe grandma, maybe grandpa, maybe something even further back in the history. So that's right. F1s. Then you'll take two, you'll take a good male and a good female from that F1 batch and breed those. Now we're making F2. F2 is going to be wild. You're going to find, uh, we call F2, I call F2 the Pandora's box. 
you're going to find things that look like mommy, things that look like dad, and the grandparents on both sides, and maybe some great grandparents and some wild stuff. Uh, the great thing that happens in the F2 generation is you'll find uh, progeny that outperforms the parents. So like the offspring will be way better by, by leaps and bounds, better than the both parents that you started with. So if you can find that plant and breed with that and make the F3, now you're really starting to lock in the traits that you're looking for. Um, and the breeder should know what they want before they even get started with this, but that's getting off track here. So the F2, you're going to get the wildness. The F3, you start narrowing things down if you do it correctly. You'll take those F2s. You'll say, this one stinks the way that I want. It's got the colors and aromas. So you take the two F2, the male and female, make F3. Then you'll just repeat the process. By F4, they get real stable. By F5, they should be uh, close to heterozygous. By F6, uh, you've got seeds that basically grow like clones if you did the selection properly. And it's all about if you did the selection properly. Most breeders, they get that far. You have to go back one time because one time in there, you're going to pick one wrong. Just You're just not going to get it right six times in a row uh, doing the selection. Okay, so this is helpful. So if I'm into a pheno hunt, I F1s or F2s. And then if I just want what is on the package, F4, F5, F6, would right. that be accurate? Ideally, yes, but there are not many breeders now that are taking the time to do that. It's not worked that far. No, Most of what you're going to buy is going to be an F1, an S1, uh, something in that. There are F2s out there, but that's about as far right. as people are going. Okay. So I think I got, and, then, and like the back crosses and stuff and the reverse back crosses is those are more or less stable. If done correctly, they should be more stable. The first back cross, if done properly, uh, there's like a mathematical chart. I think the first back cross should come out about 70 something percent uh, uniform. And then if you do it again, it's like 74 and then do it again, it's like 84%. So each back cross should get you closer to uniformity. Again, if it's all about that selection, you got to, selection is the the art of breeding that's the hardest part to develop like just it's intuition it's just knowing that plant is the one and sometimes you're wrong sure. yeah plus you can never know how they're truly going to perform when you start combining them with other things like even if you're using something you have a lot of data on and and you kind of predict its performance when you introduce that new unknown then you're just gonna you know it's gonna have to pop and find out to see if you're on track with where you thought you were going Yep. That's why testers are important. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to, to ask. Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what, I'm curious how you guys test these things and of what importance they are to you. I came up with a list, you know, for me and my grow, I've talked about the ones that have bud rot on their first grow. I already got rid of because there was one other strain that didn't, but let's start with smell strength. How high is that on the list? You test it just with stem rubbing. Like obviously, you got to wait till you have finished product, but I feel like smell is one of the top two. Smell and visually is how people judge and rate bud. Yeah, I think that the aroma. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, I, I think that the aroma is extremely important. <clears throat> it's one of the first things that's going to signal to you that, you know, this is either of interest or it's not of interest. And it's usually one of the things that can stand with you the longest right next to flavor, right? Because if the aroma is correct, it's going to draw you in. You're going to be going, well, I hope that it's going to taste like this. And then if you can, you know, bring it all the way home and have that matching profile to the aroma, usually you've got a home run. Hey, dude, run back, run down this list. Dude found a worksheet. And it's pretty interesting. Just run down the parameters here. What is there, 10 or 12? And let's see. Let's hear smell strength. Uh, trichome density, interesting. Uh, plant vigor, which is your growth rates. Disease resistant. I just talked about some phenos got bud rot, some didn't. I've seen that with powdery mildew intense. Some plants just would not get it. Um, we got plant height, internodal spacing, trim trimmability. I actually, mm -hmm. being the trimmer, find that one important. Uh, yeah. Flower color helps with marketing or your own visual appeal of the plant and finishing time. That is a big one. That's probably why I was going to ask you guys, we don't see many hazes out there on the market, right? Cause it just takes too damn long, like up to 14 weeks or something. Right. Yeah. yeah they're pretty wild. When I do it offer something market. like that, it sells though. When I put out something like that, <clears> I just put out the, uh, the Isabella and that's going to be 12 to 14 weeks in flower. And every pack of that sold quite quickly because nobody nice. else is putting it out. Yeah, I was gonna say we don't we don't do any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, people do have time, and I guess it depends what kind of breeder you are. 
Because there's people that just, they're happy to go an extra month. What do you care if you go an extra month if you got a bucket of weed? That's it. You know? And I say yes, just flower those way hard. early. If, if you've got my Isabella seeds, veg them till they're about three inches tall and then flip. That's all you got to do. And they're going to take 12 really? weeks after that. Yeah. Because they're just going to just cut out the veg time and just flower because they're going to go 12 weeks. So just use that extra flowering time, cut off the veg time. They'll they'll fill in just fine. Hey, Brad, I can you see a like, grower. Well, Go on, think, like, that's just because that's what people breed for. Like you're in L.A. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, what do you breed for as far as if you're looking on that list? Is it because, I mean, if there's a lot of kind of unicorn or really interesting stuff that I think the Irie Army is all about. But mm -hmm. what about the L.A. scene or what you're breeding for? Yeah, right now I'm I'm hyper focused on doing a lot of the Z work and uh, you know progressing Zicky guy. So we've got Zicky guy, which has been pretty much a market smash right now. Like the interest in that's been very solid, and I think it's at least um, early look of proof of concept of what I want to do to kind of resolve the shortcomings that Z has. And so this is kind of one of the first projects where. You know, we've decided we're going to do extensive focused breeding, line breeding through back crossing to try to, you know, enhance um, all of the characteristics that we love about Z and kind of reduce the things that we don't. One thing that I heard on that list was trichome density. And that's right. probably the number one thing that I when I look at the Z project, I think that will be the most challenging thing to try to make it like, you know, she's just not built to look like that. Um, but, you know, with Zicky Guy, we already see that you can have, you know, a rugged build, um, reduce all of the useless inner branching, and then also see like a solid 20% stretch, maybe even a little more depending on how developed the root zone is when you go into flower, which opposed to Z is like Z just stays the same size it is, and then it's just filled with useless branches. And so, you know, um, Zicky Guy is at least a good proof that you can get away from that and kind of keep like the pure profile um and actually enhance the potency too like smoking uh zicky guy next to z everybody was basically saying like oh zicky guy feels like more of a like a indica sedative style experience versus um smoking traditional original z all right, so I'm, I'm trying to think how I'd answer that as far as you answer it, man. So as far as you're on Frost, Frost would be your biggest attribute? That would be mine. Well, I don't think it's my biggest attribute. I think that the flavor is probably the flavor. number one thing. You know, if you have weed that tastes bad, um, and I think Z is like perfect proof. It's not the prettiest stuff out there. It actually isn't pretty at all. But, you know, when you smell it, it's extremely unique. And then when you smoke it, um, the profile is unmatched, in my opinion, if you enjoy sweet. Um, I mean, it's hard to call it anything but like a candy style uh, profile, fruity. Um, it's just really interesting. You know what I mean? And that's that's what really gets me about. It. I think that the the profile, what you taste is probably the most important thing. Obviously, it has to have these other attributes. It needs to be potent enough. But, um, you know, I'll keep choosing the thing that tastes the best almost always over whatever else is there. Because, wow. You can always yeah. 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 Jeff, so I'll flavor try going forward. I always go for the tasty jar. Like, I'm, a, I'm mostly a dabber. Uh, I smoke a lot of dabs. And I most the, dar, the jar that runs out is the one that tastes the best. Because everything's going to get me a buzz. Uh, yep. and I can smoke enough of it until I get there, no matter what it is. Uh, so it's all about that flavor. You know that there's always that one jar that runs out first. It's always the super tasty one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> or the frostiest one, man. For me, right. I'm looking open the jar uh, bucket. I'm looking for the frostiest, but I associate that with uh getting super high. So does uh, yeah, let's ask does blood structure matter to you? Like the density or the fluffiness of the flower? Do you care about that at all? Oh uh, yeah. I don't like I hard milk. I like good okay. good joint weed, you know. I saw a weigh-in in the chat saying density, and I struggle with that because I've grown some really good flour that my buddy's like, and he grows for the legacy market up here in BC, but he's like, that's that's fluffy, dude. I'm like, it's not fluffy. You just grow, he grows like real hard nug, and he's like, you know, that's what the market wants. I'm like, it doesn't mean my flour still isn't pretty good. And speaking of that, quick before we forget, Scotty Groot, was it emergency? Emergency? Is that your most recent yeah. strain? 
Yep. <clears throat> That's a, yes. And he sent me a picture of it. We we're kind of comparing bud picks because I sent him kind of a sloppy one. And he's calling me out. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go take better picks. But he sent me a triked out picture, of you will, of that flower. But does that mean, and I'll, Jeff, start with you, do more trichomes mean better weed? Because we sure see people love, they're beautiful to, to, to take pictures of. Don't get me wrong. But having more of them, does that mean it's better? Am I getting higher? I know that's where THC is. But uh, or is it more just fashion, fashion thing? Probably if those trichomes are ripe, if they've had the time to mature, I would say it's probably going to be better weed. But that's if they've had the time to mature. Grandpa, don't, don't oh, make man. me jump in the over the third ring rope and get in here, man. <laughs> it's where the terpenes and cannabinoids are, <laughs> right? Also, are, is it are they like actually fully developed trichomes, or are we looking there at a situation go. where it's like all stocks, right? And right. we see like really frosty, visually stunning flower, but you know it's kind of lacking some of the essential parts of what makes a trichome what it is. Are they knocked off? Or does on every have you, have you have you ever ever had a strain that doesn't have trichome heads? Are there some that are much bigger than others? I mean, it seems to be a genetic trait that yeah. they can be more stocky than because one thing that seems to be a little unknown on how to really steer is like the size and shape of trichomes, right? Because ideally, if we knew how to steer it, then we would all make our heads just a little bit bigger so that they could get caught in those nice bags. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit of a, a mystery on probably needing to do like some lab work to really be able to trace like a marker and be like, oh, this marker is associated with a trichome head and then try to track that through a population and, and go that route. But visually it's like, I don't know, just don't select things that are all stocks. <laughs> but, <laughs> but under a scope. <laughs> you, oh, I, I see it. Cause I'm thinking something that's leggy. I was recently, I was hanging out with Hot Rod making uh, extracts, making live rosin and that what it looks like in the uh, on the bud or even in the jar is great, but how it squeezes is a big deal these days. Are you all getting feedback like that? And that would have to do with the trichome yeah. head. Imagine, no, everybody, right? everybody, everybody wants those six and seven and eight percent washers. That's the first yeah. the first things people ask now. It used to be what's the THC percentage. Now it's what's the wash percentage is the question they ask now. So yeah, it's becoming a popular trend. Yeah, yeah. sticky imagine. tacky, right? That's what you want. Yep. The sticky tacky, they don't want the oily you, one. They want the sticky one. Yeah, when you see grease lightning, you know that that's not going to wash. So don't don't throw her in the water. Um, she's just not going to do it for you. So do you guys have to? As far as when we're looking uh, plant structure, flower color, THC, finishing time, how's it wash? Would you have to? You that's one of your top considerations now, or not really? Always. Oh yeah, it's always the current market. Yeah, yeah. And we we're talking really? about that bud density. I think that the uh, the more loose buds are going to start getting more popular. I've said this a long time mm -hmm. ago uh, because they wash better. It's not so dense. Yep. You don't have to do as much work. It's just fluffy bud. The trichomes come right off. There's more surface yeah. area too with a fluffy bud, Thank right? You. Versus a super yep. thick one. And I think that's one of the er things I heard really early in my learning experience, actually from like DJ Short doing some kind of interview. And he was explaining that if you wanted to make a really good hash plant purely for washing, uh, that you would pick something that was fluffy, most likely, and not like rock hard flowers. That's for smoking. Yeah, I would think so. Would they still well. wash. They all wash. You just got to hunt, right? You got to do the R and D and figure out where it's at. But we have things like uh, Rain Man is one of ours, and because it's a stuff French toast cross, very low leaf ratio, almost no lowers that are useless. You get a lot of really nice, uh, my friend calls it neck meat. <laughs> and those <laughs> things, not only does it perform unbelievably, you know, per square foot, but it also washes really great at like, you know, 6% or something like that. So you've got like the, the quality and these are big, thick buds. They're, they're dense, right? It's not a yeah. fluffy situation like we're talking about right now. So, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat as they would say but um yeah it does seem logical that a fluffier like if you could find one super frosted out like you're asking then trichome density would be like top of the line there right and that's not pc anymore you, you can't say skin and cats but i can say hey time to <laughs> shout out to real growers realgrowers.com making this panel possible guys yeah so if you're out there growing the dank man get yourself some recharge some grow dots or some real buckets man and you yeah. can be a real yeah. grower. I love it, Scotty. 
Um, but you yeah, get the right out, strain with that combination, man. You're growing some flowers with some neck meat, man. Neck <laughs> meat. <laughs> when you strain it, bro, don't wear it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I did want uh, to pandemic. ask uh, uh, realgrowers.com, but while I have the mic for a moment, uh, Ross and Jeff, you mentioned, you mentioned, hey, yeah, sure, you can have a ton more trikes as long as they're finished. I know we all, just to touch on this, um, we look for, I'm just seeing some amber now in my grove orange gasm, just a few, just barely any are turning amber in the trichome heads. So I'm like, man, I, do I need to wait for more of a percentage or it's time to go? It's go time. What's your tip on that? Oh, if you want uh, the, the classic answer, I probably go for about 20 to 25% amber myself. Uh, if you want that more psychedelic trippy head buzz, go a little bit sooner. If you want it to be uh, orange gasm, won't get real sedative, but if you want less of a, a psychedelic experience, uh, let them get a little bit Later. darker, but I go about 20, 25%. Uh, and I don't just check the top or just, just the bottom. I'll check a few different spots in the plant. I'll get in there and really investigate with the scope and see what I see. Yep. Side branches too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. That top's always going to finish first and it's getting abused by the light. So that one's going to finish earliest. Get down in the bottom and see what you've got down there. All right, dude. Oh. I might be losing audio soon. I didn't charge. I didn't charge my battery. I guess, man. You might. You might have to take over for a second. I'm... <laughs> Talk about morphology. Plant morphology. No, I, 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 you, I, I meant. Go ahead. Yes, oh, as far as I mean, the shape of the plant, man. Back in the day, uh, we were looking for things that worked with our system. So something short and fat. And also. <laughs> Well, you'd like my ex-wife. Yeah, it Ooh. works in my system. <laughs> hey, Grandpa, I'm going to try to turn this on and get to uh, yes, get to where I can hear. Ooh. I'm glad I organized my drawers. But yeah, organized. just wanted to jump in on the, the trichome thing there. Um, I, I know I have a lot of people ask me this in the community as well. And personally, I usually judge uh, mostly off just the way that the plant's growing and, and how it looks like we're arriving at finish. Because I know there's like a peak of profile and a peak of plant mass and profile peaks and falls off before plant mass peaks is my understanding. And I think if you pay close attention, you can see that. So I'm always trying to figure out um, where is like the optimal place where you can retain the perfect amount of profile and then also still have the necessary amount of plant mass, right? Because big, huge blown out flowers might not taste good. Right. And I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's flavor forward for us. And so everything needs to taste the best that we can help it to taste. Right. And so that's part of my process. I haven't bust a scope out uh, to look at trichomes in a while. And then I think the other thing is like, if you're going for washing, usually you're going to be cutting early anyway. And part of cutting early is to avoid, I think those Amber trikes, because you want to keep uh, the flavor and you want to really retain the color, right? Because yep. in the rosin game, having these beautiful blonde jars of just, just immaculate, almost white looking rosin is really where people just are like, shut up and take it. You know what I mean? So, you know, people are aiming for that and they achieve that goal by, you know, trying to figure out how early can you cut uh, without sacrificing too much. All right. I like it, man. I wanted to ask uh, about, I, not IPM, but molds, mildews, spider mites. What about genetic selection? Have you guys ran into that where I have seen russet mites or hemp mites like a plant more than any other plant in the grow? Is it of a different strain? I've seen powdery mildew on four plants, actually strawberry cough, because I always remember, but the great white shark plant was sharing, sharing leaves. They were hanging out, but it would never get it. So do you, if you see those things, do you get rid of those strains quickly and you grow them out again uh, to see if the problem happens again? How do you handle that? Uh, fill the room with those plants, the plants that don't mess up, uh, fill the room with those, run those again. Um, I noticed there's uh, definitely, like you said, some plants, the spider mites, the russet mites, the powdery mildew, it just doesn't go to those. Uh, use those. Those are the plants to put in the grove again and breed to those. Uh, and it's going to, you're going to find that that plant may work perfectly in your space, but it might not work perfectly in my space. Uh, so that's all, all about the pheno hunt. Find the one that works perfectly in there for you. Just like when you had that, uh, the plants you had to get rid of, you know, that's not the one. So the one that it was run that one more and more and more, and then get to know that plant, develop a relationship with it. So you know that in <laughs> week out. four in flower, it needs cow mag. You know what I mean? A week six, it needs less cow mag. So start, start narrowing it down. Take her on more dates. 
Take well, how do you dinner. do that? We only have a few, you know, what do we run? I run nine plants in my flower room. So that's, uh, I don't know. Tell me, tell me how you do that. Do you get, go get a pack and share it with your buddies? Or uh, how do you run a pheno hunt when you're only running? You know, a lot of our growers are running a couple tents. I would say run them all the same. Whatever you're going to do, run. If you got <laughs> nine of them, put nine of them in the same size pot. Feed them all the same nutrients. Do everything the same. Make it scientific so that there's no... Because uh, if you feed one an extra bloom booster, obviously it's going to get bigger. If you feed one more microbes, it's going to do different stuff. So treat all nine of them the same. Um, grow them. Grow them with the best of your ability. Uh, harvest them. Dry them. Cure them just like you normally would. Uh, take notes when you're growing them. Uh, one is going to get your attention. It's like when you go into a room to date people. One one of the people in there is going to get your attention. A few you're going to go, not for me. Uh, the plants are the same way, at least to me. I can see it early on. So you'll see. You'll find totally. you'll fall in love with a couple while you're growing them. So take notes. Uh, was one a pain in the ass? That might not be the one for you. Was one super easy to grow? That might be the one for you. Uh, so take notes while you grow it. See what works. Dry it, cure it, and then most importantly, smoke it. Uh, the one that the bag that's empty the first is probably the plant that you want to grow. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's not the most hardy plant, though. <laughs> that's the struggle is being a, a breeder. Sometimes uh, yeah. plant number two is covered in trichomes and. Uh, grew super amazing and you harvest it and it tastes like charcoal and plant number three yeah. uh, didn't look that good. It put out a little bit when you smoke it, you get high and it tastes so good. And you're like, ah, oh, why can't I have, yeah, it's just, that's the breeder struggle. The big plant. thinking of so many good. analogies to like dating and, and women it's for some reason, but totally I'm not is. Right <laughs> yeah. you're, you're right though. It is. And you know, early on, sometimes you're at a table with somebody and you're like, can we just get the check and end this? Cause I already know. Like I, I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> yeah, right. Anywhere. Like plants yeah, I mean, do the same thing for me. You, you never want to pick the plants that are prone to having problems because obviously you're just setting yourself up for failure. But you also can't keep the ones that are unbelievably hardy just based on that alone. I guess I mean if you're gonna look at it from a breeder's perspective, maybe you're like I'm gonna try to get that attribute and bring it into something else. Then there's a value. But if if you're just a hobbyist and you're just trying to get some good smoke. I mean, no matter what, you just got to pick the one that you can handle the best that performs the way you do things. And that if that jar goes empty first, that's that's yep. literally like that's your no brainer, like pass the jar around. Whatever's gone first, that's probably the thing that is the best tasting thing in there. And at the Damn. end of the day, like, you- why would you want to taste cardboard? <laughs> you know, you want to taste yeah. oranges. You want to taste the hazes, the lemons. You know, you want to taste the kush. You want to taste pine. You want to taste really interesting candy profiles, things that, you know, expand your mind and just get your energy going. And otherwise you smoke something, you're like, ah, oh, test it. 47% tastes like cardboard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, Scotty, Sad. this is the, you guys can hear me okay? Yes, sir. I hear you. This was, I think, me, me and Scotty record hours and hours every week, and my headphones just died as well. I think that's the first time it happened. You guys are on this. track. Oh, your cycles are synced sharp. Up, guys. Oh my he God. said their cycles are synced up. What <laughs> is happening? I was hey, on ask, uh, bud, bud, bud to leaf ratio, trimmability, things the growers have to deal with, internodal spacing, those type of attributes. Do you guys, does it matter for you? To get yeah. Out? when they can you know like if it's something like a stuff french toast or a lot of the things that have that in it we see extremely low leaf ratios we don't see lowers that are like unappealing there's pretty much nothing that would be like uh, your b grade stuff and de-leafing and trimming is a breeze right because it's all big fans you're like pop 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 big it. fans are gone and then when you slap it down to the trimmers there's like no leaf there it's you know what i mean so like those definitely have their place um when you can have them it's good to keep them in the arsenal for sure but you know sometimes you have to deal with uh i know one of mine specifically that is a chore to trim is a uh, blueberry pie Flowers are amazing. Totally juices worth the squeeze on it. Tastes, tastes great. Right. Um, but you do find like, it's one of those flowers where there's a bunch of little like crown finger leaves that end up sticking out like through the cone shape. And if you don't have somebody who's skilled and patient, it's hard to get in there and kind of like remove those. Um, so yeah, that, that can make your trimmers unhappy when you have something like that. Turn it all to bubble anyhow. 
Yep. If you Where's can't your trimmer, <laughs> you mean me? I mean, who's your trimmers? Like that's me. <laughs> Whoever the homies, you, know, you get the boys together. You come yeah. down. You have a classic smoke sesh. Next thing you know, you're trimming as much as you're smoking, and uh, you're getting nowhere. <laughs> hey Jeff, are yes, there strains that you that you recommend that nobody trims? That you just grow it and then just flower it up, let it have a big fat central bud, or is it and either y'all can jump in or, or do you like i train everything you know i'll clean the larf and i'll try to get four or five branches i don't like that one big central bud but thoughts on that man that's all about your style that's all about uh what the grower wants you know i in a commercial grow i trellis everything out a whole bunch uh, right. when i'm doing pheno hunts i don't do any topping or any of that manipulation because i want to see what the plant does uh, i want to see does it make a big old giant top does it make little puny buds i want to see that so, uh, yeah, it just depends on the goal of that room. Um, sometimes if I'm breeding, a lot of times I'll take the main top out just so I can make a bush. Cause I feel like I get more, uh, more pistols, more surface area for pollination that way. Instead of one big top, I get a bunch of little mediums and I can pollinate the room, the canopy more evenly. So it's just all about the, uh, the idea of the room. Yeah. That's what I'm into, but I heard back in the day that I thought it was skunk number one. It might've been something else, but that you just don't mess with it. You let it grow. It's one big fat top. You don't waste a ton of time in veg. And uh, that's like the, the best yield out of that thing. But I, I never understood that. I always, if, you always know, well, if you look at the way skunk grows, it puts out that big main center. That was a pretty perverse yeah. movement I did there. But then the bottom branches kind of match up to it. So there's no need to really manipulate that one. Uh, a plant like golden goat, that, that golden goat gets a lot of leaf inside. Uh, my nuke town will get a lot of extra branching and leaf inside. Those should be cleaned up. So it's all about your style and the plant, I guess. Your what? Nuke town, you said? Nuke town. Yeah, it's a Chernobyl to Golden Goat. Uh, nuke town is a nod to a, a video game. If you're a gamer, you know where I'm headed with that. Love it. Oh, Love yes. it. <laughs> Just think, uh, what do you, how do you all name your strains? I imagine there's a. Joint. Hey, whatever, whatever sounds cool, right? Sometimes people don't get it, but yeah, I like Nuke Town. That's a good call out. I love <laughs> It That's takes fun. a lot of Googling. Every time you want yeah. to name a strain, you got to Google. And then I'll have other people Google it too, just because their Google brings them different stuff because their algorithm. I'll be like, hey, is this name taken? Because it's embarrassing when you steal somebody's name on accident. Because I try not to. Yeah, of course. Of course. I don't know. What, I, can, what I will just say, yes, dude. quickly before on the pheno hunt, I wanted to mention that my plant that I stuck with, and maybe I did this all too quick, but I did one growth cycle of flowering with four phenos and only one. OG2, I called it, didn't get any bud rot, looks way easier to trim than the other phenos, smells as good, and there was one other factor. Oh, the nutrition. We didn't touch on nutrition. She was not picky at all. Not throughout the whole grow on the dots, she looked the best, like cool. no deficiencies anywhere of any sort, you know, super easy. So that thing checked four boxes out of like, you know, 12 or 10 I'm looking at. So right. I made the decision right then and there to quicken it up. Some people are like, you should keep the other ones because you didn't do the smoke test. Of course, that might be disappointing if I'm like, man, this one, I love the flavor and the high on this one. But when it checked so many boxes I have to deal with as a grower, I'm like, that's it. That's the one I'm I'm growing two moms of right now to try and get my clones as quick as I can. And uh, heck, that doesn't work what out. What if you don't like the all. smoke, though? That's a good point I, your friend had there. What what if you smoke it and you're like, oh, man, like she's stunning in every way except for where the flavor's at? Yep. It, it's, for me, it would be, I'd be crippled. I'd be like, well, that just set me back. I'm not putting, I'm not putting these up. <laughs> you know? I, so I, it just I feel you. I have faith that uh, Rasta's Jeff, the, the he'll pull through with the, uh, the smoke test. We'll see. I like that. I'll let you know. I like it. I'm in there. <laughs> so, it's, so that's, you got the one pack of uh, orange gasm. And so you got, is that one, is that one that should normally have a bunch of phenos in it, Jeff? When you look at orange gasm in a catalog, there's no, it just says that there's no F3 or I, you know, anything like that. Right. There, is uh, so orange gasm is what we would call an R1. Um, this may take a couple of seconds. So when you make fem seeds, um, there's a process. I'm going to skip a lot of details, but so if you take, uh, we take a plant and we reverse it. And then if you take that pollen from that reverse, if you take a female and make, make it create pollen, that's called reversing it. Um, if you put that pollen on the same plant, so golden goat to golden goat, that is an S1 because we have selfed it. If I put that pollen on any other cultivar, it is now an R1, which is a reversal. So in the reversals, we're going to see some different phenotypes. That's a lot like making an F1. 
uh, you're putting in two different ingredients. So you're going to see uh, traits from both of the ingredients. You're going to see golden so goat leaning lot. phenotypes, uh, platinum tangy leaning phenotypes, and anything you breed the platinum tangy to, uh, it does show a couple. Uh, that one gives you a lot of phenotypes, actually. There's a Girl Scout cooking looking, Girl Scout cookies looking phenotype. And then definitely the tangy, uh, banana, strawberry, tangy sort of phenotype also comes out of that. So yeah, I expect a few phenotypes from that. That's not uncommon or surprising. Now, when you're selfing something, that's dialing in because there's only one set of genetics there, right? You're right. And mostly that's that's for preservation well, was why it started. Like I had this golden goat plant. I didn't want to lose it. So I selfed it. And now I've got golden goat seeds in the vault seeds, so that if something goes it. wrong, uh, I've always got that same golden goat preserved. Uh, but also sell those because I thought everybody deserved golden goat. I didn't like that uh, people in other states couldn't get access to good medicine. So I made golden goat seeds available to everybody is kind of how that happened. And because itself, those are very heterogeneous. No, I don't know. What's, what's, they're all the same? <laughs> Hetero, heterozygous, the same. There we go. Oh, no, homo, homozygous, the same, right? Yeah, homo, sorry. I mean, there's probably still a reasonable amount of variation, but it should be right baseline with that mom, right? It's all based on like how how stable that is because I've seen some S ones where they're not good, and then we've seen S ones where they're like unbelievably good, right? So it just always circles back around to that plant and what you can't see going on inside of it. But I feel yeah. like um, like with our Georgia uh, with the Georgia pie S ones that we have, they're very similar to the mom, but there's definitely like they hop off the trail a little bit right they're like in line with the profile and the structure but there will be little nuanced differences and stuff to it but at least you can preserve basically that that right. genotype and kind of keep looking inside and eventually find like a pretty close replicant um yeah. or at least a great variant yeah most of the time you'll find what you're what you need out of it to, to keep yeah, it going 100%. or bring it back yeah and with the golden yeah, goat there's a, there's a phenotype that comes out of my golden goat uh, it's just real tall and real crazy. It takes like 12 weeks to finish. It's kind of rare, but it does pop up. I think that comes from the Island Sweet Skunk or the Hawaiian Sativa. Uh, but that's a real strange one, a real anomaly, a real outlier. But when you smoke that one, it is so potent that it's wild. Uh, it's definitely like a head tripper, just straight to your brain. You you want to call the cops on yourself for being too high when you smoke it. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of weed I like, man. That's what I like. Looking out the windows and shit because I'm too high. Man, that's fun. I don't ever see stuff like that, especially here in oh, California. Yeah. Like, There's almost nobody in this market that's interested in, in doing anything that's like longer than nine weeks. It's pretty yeah. much like everybody's capped in on nine week cycles. If they can lock in some eight week cycle rooms, then they're pretty fucking stoked. That's commercial. Growing. <laughs> they're pretty stoked there. Yeah. yeah. I got a topic, man. Is that I seen a, a couple, I was talking to a, a banner was explaining the whole F one and all that stuff to me. And he goes, there's not really too many F1s anymore because or around anymore because <laughs> everything's kind of been bred with each other. You know, everything's kind of. And then he was talking about how the everything's kind of been selected and then bred again to where there's not that big of a gene pool anymore. And I actually saw an article about it was bulldogs, British bulldogs, how they were all bred to have like this, you know, they were like the aggression was bred out of them and the nose was meant to be super flat. And now they're trying to undo that stuff. And they're like, we don't really have enough genetic diversity to do that. And I was thinking about that, like feminized seed or a self seed, you know, that's a, uh, that's only got one set of genes, right? Right. And and that's meant for preservation. Um, okay, okay. So part of, part of what I do is I don't breed the hype stuff. Like no offense to anybody breeding certain lines, but I don't follow uh you don't see a lot of gelato or skittles or any of that in my lineup. I breed the plants that I love. Um if I like it, uh that's what I make. So I'm not I'm kind of breaking that uh bottlenecking thing down, but that's where we look to the land race nerds. And I call them nerds cuz with all due respect uh, weed growers are one level of nerd. Weed breeders are another kind of nerd. <laughs> yeah. And those genetics people are like a very niche group yeah. of nerds within the weed community. And they'll be the ones to rescue us when we do get bottled. We need in. them. They're yes. very important people. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, very yeah. important little. They're they're like the LARP nerds of the weed world, but I love them for it. Like, <laughs> we definitely need them. Oh, but man, I think you were referring to how like things aren't traditional F ones based on unique line bred hybrids, right? Like right. that's like a traditional F one. The way we use F one F two these days is kind of just like a, a marker of 
how many like levels of breeding are in going forward if you're doing line breeding like one two three four right so you know at least we're doing line breeding but that doesn't mean that it's um a traditional like f1 hybrid everything now is is technically poly hybrids so i think yeah. that's kind of like what he was alluding to is how things are so intermingled that there's no line work to lock in traits and so it's kind of like mixing pandora's basket with pandora's basket sometimes or just Absolutely. like you yep. know but that's kind of where the magic hour is too right like as long as you have things that are unique and interesting then typically you can find something that will reach whatever your goals are as far as profile uh, for me i think everything just always going to circle back to flavor like you need returns you need these other things um uh, but no matter what if it like if it's something that washes at like seven percent but it tastes really bad it's only saving grace would be that it blends well in hash where you could wash it you could get bulk material that's like it's just not flavorful it's like flavorless maybe and then you could blend in something that brings a lot more like hash guys do some pretty interesting things uh blending grades and and using like 30 70 yeah. like to try to achieve a, a texture sure. and stuff like that so you know depending on your resourcefulness and your level of skill and experience like there's a use for stuff like that but you you know, like you're creating a very specific environment where this unappealing thing that does one thing great is now a keeper for some reason. You just hunt again, find the thing that really is like, checks more boxes. Social media to, uh, hunting. Go ahead, dude. A little shout out in, man. It involves you guys as well. Uh, if you guys do want to get your hands on some Irie genetics, some raw, come to the DGC Cup. Meet the breeders. Brad, I'm not sure if you're making out for sure, but I know you're going to have some packs there. Ross yes, and Jeff, you're going to be hanging at the Cup. This is June 1st, Fort Collins, Colorado, dgccup.com. Great place to come and hang out. One of the best weed parties of the summer, Scotty, if I may. Um, also, so bad, man. my really good friend is getting married that day. And I feel so, I'm, I'm, yeah, our really good friend, our buddy Corey from over at Way to Grow. And I feel like a jerk not going to his wedding. And then I said that to High C this morning, and he goes, "Have him get married at the DGC Cup." <laughs> I think know. that's brilliant. No? I think that's special, brilliant. special moment. <laughs> Love it. Also, share. guys, hit that hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the conversation, and if you are a grower, which I know a lot of you are, get some good gear for your grow. Go to dudegrows.com forward slash rose that's where all our coupon codes are listed dgc bedded gear and a great way to save money or get a gift for the grower in your life get a gift for yourself dudegrows.com forward slash pros yes man i just gotta give some love to both you guys brad raw genetics jeff i ross to jeff i read genetics man you guys are great friends of the show i can call you all up and like that get some great conversation going so man it's good to have friends Oh, dude, Don't we threaten appreciate me with a good time. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> yeah. I said, I have to take a break and hang out with my bros for a few minutes. Oh, oh darn. Man. Rough life. I That's love so it. Every step to Jeff. I was, we were BSing a little bit before, and I was like, hey, hey, Jeff, what do you do? Uh, you know, what's your day like? What do you do? You know, almost what do you do when, you, when you're not smoking or growing weed? And there wasn't a ton not re cannabis related. Hang out in the morning. You, you know, you do some emails or hang out with the IRE Army. There's grows to go visit, and it's like living the life you love. I remember I saw a sticker that said that, live the life you love, and I um, think we're very lucky to be doing that. I try not to let it go overlooked. I try to uh, show that I'm grateful every day. So, yeah, I do, I do notice it, and I'm, I don't have to clock in, man. There's nobody yelling at me. I'm the boss, and that's always <laughs> been the dream. That's the dream, right, mm -hmm. to not have to clock in and nobody yelling at you all day. So I'm great. Yeah, I, do. I do enjoy that, except for you never clock out sometimes. So that that, that can be a little vexing at times, but I, it's man. totally worth it. You know, when what you do is your passion and uh, you get to live that every moment, then it, it makes it a little better. It's always going to be hard sometimes. So you can take the good with the bad. It's way more yeah. good than bad for sure. And we've all paid our all dues, man. You know, sitting on a five gallon Home Depot bucket trimming, working a hundred lighter. <laughs> That's paying dues. That might be yeah. a 
Brad and I met, maybe. I mean, it sounds like an extremely specific reference. <laughs> I got one for you guys. Uh, just since, since we have you on the panel, um, THC, some people, I don't know, all, all breeders don't, I believe, list it on their pack uh, percentage. What you should expect from this pack of seeds or from this strain, what's the THC percentage? Um, and how do you test that? And do you see, it's obviously not an equal playing field, right? I mean, not all, there's no standard there for all breeders to use the same certified lab and some labs are going to come in higher than others. Um, so yeah, how do you guys test it? And do you both, both of you list that on your pack? It's a pretty important marketing and information feature. No, I actually don't list that information on mine. Um, I don't think there's like a, a universal standard, like way that all the labs do it at this point. But, you know, there's a lot of reliable ways to get the information. Um, I do think it's important for people at some levels, but I just don't like to promote people being hyper fixated on THC percentage. Um, you nice. know, I think that we we sample all these products ourselves. So I know if something is like super weak and if somebody tells me, I'm just be very forward with like what it is. Cause I always want to get people what's going to fit for their, their goal, their task. Right. But yeah, at the end of the day, I, I don't think that the THC numbers are as important really as a standalone metric um, as they are blown up to be in some markets. Like I know the rec market, uh, in California, I hear from producers, they're like, oh, if it doesn't test over like 25%, people don't even want to buy it, which is right. insane, yeah. which yeah. is insane yeah. because you're literally capping yourself out of having access to potentially some of the most like effective things that you could consume because THC alone is not enough to really get the job done. It's kind of going to be like a short lived flash in the pan, at least sure. in my experience. Yeah. But when I have something that's like, three, four percent terps and a reasonable potency, right? Like that the the profile and the like uplifting experience I get from just pure enjoyment of taste along with effect, it, it seems to give me like much longer legs. Um, so, you yeah. know, I always just try to tell people we want to find the thing that will perform for you, but also we want to make sure to get something that's going to have like a, a memorable flavor because that's what will always keep bringing you back. Flavor, flavor, no flavor. Keep hearing that from both of you. Flavor. Yeah, right? Yeah, and as, as the market matures, I mean, right now everybody goes, you know, give me the strongest stuff. Like when you're uh, 21 or you get your fake ID, whatever it is, and you go in and you're like, what's the strongest beer you got? Man, malt liquor? I'll take it. Or, yeah, Cisco. Shout out to Cisco. Strongest thing they sell at the, at the, at the gas station. Right? No, but you know what I'm saying? And then as you get more... <laughs> more mature your tastes uh, get more refined you're like oh no i like this specific beer because it's light or there's certain beers that will give you a, a pretty yeah. different buzz you know well, i'm looking for like a, a consistent experience that feels rewarding right and like that's pretty much what i think it's it'll be a little bit different for everybody but at the end right. of it we're all looking for something that will consistently feel rewarding in the moment when we're enjoying and it's like if you're gonna be smoking weed like at this point you have to smoke weed for probably like 20 something years at least and i i don't want to smoke anything that's not good like if somebody shows up and and they have something that's unappealing i'll be the politest person ever and and have a, a reasonable reason why i've declined to smoke in that moment and i'll usually give them some weed right because i'll never want to turn it, somebody right? down yeah bro display yeah. a little generosity and you know i appreciate when people come up and sometimes you, you see it at the show sometimes people come up with a train wreck but they're proud of it and you can't you know you don't want to discount them on their journey because yeah. Yeah. where they are in that day is not where they are in six months right so you just try to help them and, and see what you can do get them in the community help with some education but but yeah, man, it's just flavor over everything, pretty much. Dude, I was, I, my beeper's going off. That's my door. Sorry, yeah, some my somebody's walking in right now. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. Dude, I was hanging out yesterday with uh, a buddy, and he invited us over for dinner. He's a bit older, and he had this. Uh, I had these, I had these vape pens, and they were good. It was like the Benz carts, you know, really high quality. And he's hitting them, and then he's like, "Here, hit mine." And it was like, you know, purple flavored bizarro juice or something like that. And about how do I kind of taste? I hit it and be like, hmm. And then I like mastered kind of like walking, you know, doing that and talking and then trading it back to them. But yeah, it's very awkward, man. Very well, I awkward. told uh, 
Yeah, the, the, the scene's weird. On the younger uh, scene, my kid's 19, and he had a couple buddies over the other day. They were actually borrowing a snowboard from me. And they're like, they know I took. And they're like, hey, you want to try this? I'm, this is a vape pen with a... I'm like, what is it? And he's like, it's like watermelon ice. It tastes great. Yeah, like, right. what's in it? Like, what, what, like, is it, what type of product is it? They didn't care. They're just like, it gets as high and it tastes like, you know, candy. And so it's... <laughs> and and the, I know that's some BS terps in there, but... Oh, yeah. Interesting down the higher end, older people in the market, Scotty, and maybe some of the younger kids as far as uh, the vape pen things go. You know more of what the flavor is than anything else. Is it I don't more any... like a... Yeah, sorry, Jeff. I, was gonna, I don't put potency on my packs um, uh, for legal reasons, technical reasons, and um, I'm going to grow, not to be conceited, I'm probably going to get a higher potency number than a new grower. And if I did, when I was putting that stuff on my website, I was just collecting averages, basically. Uh, yeah, if I did get a few things true. tested, you tested at 20, you tested 25, we'd say it's 22%. Just kind of collect data and post the averages. But I don't I don't post THC percentages anymore. If you want to sell seeds on a website, you have to leave out a lot of details. If you want to accept credit cards, you have to leave off yeah. a lot of details. The credit card oh, process stinks. will let you, yeah. You can't put yeah. like anything Speaking. really. I, I hear it all the time. People are like, oh, why don't, why don't you have this wealth of information on every product? And I'm just like, I just simply cannot do that. And yep. uh, it does bump people out. So if anybody's out there has been wondering, like, why do we not have like all the information we could audibly tell you? It's it's literally just a technicality. We just simply can't. It do might it. change for you guys soon. Maybe with the current the rescheduling, whatever they're doing is supposed to help banking. So I hope that helps out. It almost that, I mean, always I've, makes everything worse before it makes it better. <laughs> so <laughs> just more, to be honest with you so far. Yeah. Three accounts canceled, more paperwork to figure out. We'll figure Agreed. this one out. Yeah, yeah. Higher, ta higher taxes. Sounds can't like even send an happen. email anymore. <laughs> but we get it all the time, man. Why can't you show your, your buds? You know, why can't you show your grow? I'm going to show my buds. Ready? Do it. Just to me, man. Just to me. Oh, yeah, are, you sure, man. are you sure, man? Yeah. There may or may not be something inside of this bucket. Bust right? <laughs> Bust them so it's Hollywood oh, magic. Oh. You know, it's all about perspective. Yes. And by the way, y'all, I am so spoiled with this stuff because of both y'all's work. Yeah, you make me look good. I grab a, actually, I didn't even grab a pack of orange gasm. Somebody did the Fino hunt for me a couple years back. Dude, big giant beast of a plant, man. Like yeah. as far as bigger goes, man, that is a vigorous one. She's popular. Yeah, she'll put out big old giant colas that taste yep. like orange candy. Uh, there's some really stinky phenotypes that come out too, and you can identify those early. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm glad it worked well for you. Where are the pictures, dude? It would have been nice to see some photos. There's gotta Hello? be, man. It was a couple years ago. I talked the hell out. <laughs> All right. I, I love a good sweet orange strain, man. I really do enjoy orange as a profile. When it's <laughs> when it's done right and it's not like that nasty rind that's kind of like sharp in a unappealing yeah. way. I don't like those, which sometimes tangy falls real heavily into. But when you can get it to be like a sweeter, more pronounced profile, I can really get behind a seed. Flour, rosin. Oh man, dabbing like uh I remember smoking like the orange cookie batter back in the day from TLC. Bro, loved it back in the day. Good love, orange, always that, a good orange. Way. Orange turf orange. has such a nice buzz to it. Like I associate that orange turf with just like that smiley, goofy, yeah. happy daytime social buzz. I mean, it made cherry. It's part of what made cherry Paloma such a popular win. Also, I mean, Jr. had an amazing selection. Won the lottery. Yeah. He killed it with like deploying the marketing information to people, and the community responded really well. And then. At the end of the day, it's just like, uh, you know, I saw her in flower the other day. It's just instantly purples, you know, checks a lot of boxes. She's hardy. She's big. She's frosty. And it's just an unbelievable profile that comes off of that thing with almost no like heavy lifting on on the growers part. Right. Man. Yeah. Scotty. Good. Yes, sir. Smoky AMS in the chat says, man, you should get some two gallon buckets from the paint dial at the hardware store. You got too much of a air volume in your five gallons, he thinks. So just a tip. Should I show it? Man? <laughs> Reach in and show us how far up the weed is. Yeah, it's like just a wrist about a wrist in there. <laughs> Scotty Real, you know really? how to do it. Dude, do I have permission? You can show anything you want, buddy. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Oh, we'll say we'll say we'll save it for the Patreon. Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. 
Oh, oh, man. There, there you go. go. Hit, hit him on the Patreon. Scotty Reel is going to bust down the bucket and his skimmies, and he'll put on a good show for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the whole, what is that, uh, you know, take the bucket or something like that. I like that. There you Super go. Bowl Gatorade. Maybe yeah. we can get him an extra <laughs> no, big bucket and he can pop cake. out of it like no. a cake or something, right? Like holding yeah. some. <laughs> yes. All get right. creative, uh, you know? I got a Sicko Grows says, how many paying members will it take to not care? Sicko Grows, we have meetings about this stuff all the time. It's a weird biz we're in when we're talking about cannabis on our free TV channel, as Scotty calls it. Um, so it's, it's, uh, something we definitely care about, man. And we want the ability to be able to, and we also think these, these things will be changing, um, with policy and it would be good to see that happen. So it's kind of playing both sides of it. Sicko grows. Um, and, uh, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I think hey. it's important to walk the line, right? I mean, it's important that you guys are able to generate enough revenue. And if you can get the money from YouTube, from people just enjoying the content that's educational and us having a good time, and that's like a beneficial revenue stream for your business, then it's just going to give you more longevity, more runway, and the ability to keep delivering all of this great content to people for a long time. So you know, we'll, we'll, we'll walk the line the best we can for YouTube so you guys can monetize, you know, where, where you can. Yep. Speaking of that, O'Cannabis 613 says, uh, Bruce Jenner strain. <laughs> I'd be concerned about intersex traits. <laughs> um, you're always <laughs> looking for him, right? There was a comment on that <laughs> before, and that's, it's a good, it's a good segue to bag seed. All right. But, uh, this is from John <laughs> Kehoe, 8368. Says Scotty, bag seed, LOL. Uh, very few and far between now, but I got one out of some Gorilla Glue 4, so I'm going to go see if it'll grow. I love free seeds. Always make your day when they grow. Is bag seed safe? Is that going to harm? Is that what, what do you do with bag seed? Yeah, <laughs> we don't know. Um, we, you the, know, irony know. There, the irony there is that Gorilla Glue was an accident. So he got an accidental yep. seed from an accidental cross, yep. uh, and that accident was a hit. Um, golden goat was an accident. I strongly believe girl scout cookies was a mistake. So a lot of the most popular strains were bag seed or were not meant to even happen. So who knows what My you can parents told me. Yeah. And yeah. plus gorilla glue is real interesting. Like I've, I've known that strain for a long time and I've seen it occasionally throw out like a branch that almost will reverse on its own. Like she's got a weird morphology if, if she gets a little out of whack sometimes. So it's most likely just a gorilla glue S one and, um, I mean, lots of those have been produced. This yeah. is not the best way to make it, but I think that, you know, it's a 50, 50 shot that you might find something that's good. You know, I don't know. It probably won't be like unbelievably unstable where you're like, ah, oh, this thing's right nightmare or something like that. You'll probably find something that's fine, but you know, you got to win the lottery like JR token. If you're yep. on one seed, right. all of the chem stuff was bag seed. If you think about chem D chem 91, um, all of those strains, Chem 4, those were all technically yep. bag seed. So somebody just said Chem Dog in the chat there. That's yep. So it could be the next Chem Dog. You might have something fire. I do love some Chem 91. Oh, that's the best More one. Than somebody. That cool. was Kazon. I breed with her. I, I still haven't been able to get the right cut in my hand on the Chem 91, but even though I, they're traditionally a little bit unstable when you're breeding with them, uh, the Chem 91 is tasty enough that it's worth, it's worth getting in there, getting dirty. Yeah, we'll have to I'll get dirty with it. <laughs> Dude, what's it mean when they call you a little bit unstable? It's mostly stable, okay? You know, it's the hot to crazy ratio, right? Yeah. So you got to fall in the yeah. content. <laughs> Kim Lady yeah. once hot, but she's crazy. <laughs> if Kanye wasn't crazy, Donda would have sucked. That's all I'm saying. It's true. Man. Hey, do you, you can't guys... Provide seed understand the the triploid thing uh my buddy naven johnson <laughs> shout out to you brother i know he's watching uh texted me a couple days ago and he's like hey i've got this i can check i'm not sure what the strain was and i got i got a triploid out of it and i know that's some kind of freak with an extra set of gen, uh, genes but and i and then i saw something an article about how triploids are like a new trend going on do you understand do you understand that? Next time I, I talk to him, will you guys help me sound smarter at least? <laughs> I could try, but I'll be struggling with you. I mean, I understand <laughs> the, the basic overview, the goal of the projects that people are doing with that is to make plants that like don't pollinate really. Um, but other than that, like I don't really oh. know enough to like carry a real educational conversation about it with depth of information that would be useful. 
I love it when Was people have the ability to say, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know what it is, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. I know I know about as much as Brad. Um, so it's uh, a plant with so most of the time when you breed, you get a chromos chrom chromosomes from mom and dad, but somehow in these triploids, uh another set pops up. And what the what breeders are doing now, and this isn't new uh in agriculture, this has happened in other plants in the past. It's just, just new in the cannabis world. Uh we're always a little bit behind. But if you take the right ploidal combinations and breed them together, the progeny is non-impregnable. So you cannot pollinate the offspring. So you can mm. take the right combinations of plants. And then that way, a breeder uh, can just make a cross. And I know you're not ever going to breed to it. That's my cross. You can't do anything to it. That's that's as far wow. as it goes. And yeah. If it's stable, then it's outdoor crop ready, right? You could take it. Right. You could go and it at scale they'll hopefully also have made it where it's stable and desirable and then you don't have to worry about you know john smith down the road who put his hobby mail outside and now you've got you know a hectare of whatever this plant is getting pollinated you're like what do i do i was going to flower <laughs> you know so i think that's like probably one of the main goals there too right not only to like control people being able to use it but to make it uh stable enough to like cultivated at scale outside and that's actually a cool benefit so you're saying it can't seed right or it's extremely unlikely to seed at least like i'm, I'm sure they can get it to where it can't at all but it seems like uh everybody says mac one is also a triploid yeah and it, it will seed it won't seed very well and it usually won't make very many but i tried multiple um sources of pollen different males on it and the French toast mail actually made me the most. I got about 1,200 fully mature, beautiful seeds, which was exactly 100 packs of Iceberg Slim for people to get. And then everything else I tried gave me like one seed and like some yeah. unfinished seeds, like nothing there. So yeah. I think maybe with the right pollen source, you could still get, you could still have an effect potentially. Um, again, pending, like I don't know the most about it, but that was just the only reference I could have there on like, maybe you could still pollinate them under some circumstances, but, but yeah, I'm not hundred percent. It's cool. Chad Westport says, uh, that's what she said. Now we are, here we are five kids deep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> First one uh, didn't teach you anything. That's awesome. <laughs> Shout out to you, Chad. Another great friend of the show. That's a good dude. Absolutely. And knows his stuff too. Yeah. Hey man, give us some shout outs. We usually do about an hour. I learned some stuff. I feel good. Yeah. We can write everything down. But man, will you, what you're up to, I, I tell you what, Brad, tell me what you're up to, man. I know you got a couple cool projects and let's bullshit. Yeah. Man. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to be doing a pre release box set. We haven't done any box sets in a while. So we wanted to do something that was kind of cool, a little bit different. Um, I've been on my journey of like making collectibles and stuff like that. So I've got, some of these we're cracking out, trying to get up to about a hundred of these. Um, this is this very just collectible figure here. And so we've got a, uh, the Z Pi box set. It's going to have all of the packs, all half packs, collectible stickers, collectible figurine. And then we're also going to have digital collectibles as well, where you could claim a couple of uh, digital collectibles for free. I'll send them, I'll airdrop them to you. It'll cost you nothing. Um, and then another cool, uh, part of this is we're going to have 10 golden tickets. I know golden tickets, not like a new concept to throw into something, but you know, we'll have, uh, two levels of shopping sprees, some that are going to be worth 750 and some that are going to be worth 500. And so just by buying the box, you know, there's only hundred in total. So, you know, 10 of them, it's a pretty good chance that, uh, you know, you might get a winner and you get to go on a shopping spree for free. I'm good at math. It's a 10% chance. Just so there you know. There you go. There man. you go. Dude, we, I, we need to get our marketing together, man. <laughs> we have a DGC discount of 30%, all right? Man, you guys are cheap. We don't even have a figurine, dude. Uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. I know <laughs> if we can take it over to, I hear Rasta Jeff has, uh, if you get an Irie Army shirt and go visit them at the Cup, you get some. you got some promo there. They're both creative. What do you got going on? Uh, if you wear if you wear an Irie Army or an Irie Genetics T-shirt or a hoodie to the cup, uh, you can even a hat would work for you if you're wearing it. And I could see that it's on you. Just don't show up and put it on just to get a free pack of seeds. Wear that stuff, rock it. But if you show up with a Rasta Jeff Irie Army Irie Genetics gear, you will get a free gift. Uh, I haven't told anybody what the gift is, but it will be worth your time and energy. Pop up to the booth and say hello. Um, I'm not as organized on 
uh, merch and stuff is Brad. That looks really good. I'm impressed. Uh, but I will have, uh, I've got a bunch of skunk stuff that I'm working with and putting out. I will have new skunk stuff at the DGC cup. Uh, a lot of great stuff at the cup. I'm working up toward the cup. That's where all the hype is right now for me. Yeah, I'd be so good if she would buy a dude and Scotty figurine. Oh, I definitely <laughs> would. Can we I have the whole hands, dude? Let me get a dude and Scotty bobblehead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get the head just like <laughs> just fucking bobble. <laughs> where can uh where can the growers find your gear? Where can they get your merch? Uh, uh, iregenetics.com will get you to the merch, the discord, the seeds. That'll get you to everything you need. iregenetics.com. Yeah. How about you, Brad? Uh, rawgenetics.io. If you want to go and get yourself some seeds today, rawclothingco.com. If you want to get some new apparel and, uh, we just put secret selections, uh, back on track. So if you're looking to get some slips, secretselections.io to go get yourself some clean verified genetics. Wow, slips are now a thing, man. Yeah, slips are moving. Yeah, no kidding. For lazy people like me, I'm surprised how well uh, <laughs> my buddy brought me some slips, and it was three of them and a little paper towel, just the bottom wrapped in a paper towel. Yep. And, uh, they're actually for Banner, and after like, like I don't know, oh, it was gonna be overnight, and I was like, I can't, I can't let them just sit in a Ziploc bag. So I went, <laughs> I got my clone dome out, and I made clones for them and everything. But nice. uh, I don't know, man. It's counterintuitive, but it does work, huh? It works. You know, you can get yourself verified genetics, and depending on where you get them, you can get them bug-free and disease-free as well. Sure. Get yourself something that, you know, save a lot of time. Electricity, nutrients, and time are all valuable resources, and sometimes people don't want to pheno hunt, and so it makes sense to just go directly to yeah. what's got your eye and try to get a proven selection set up three or four, whatever you can afford to do in your space. And then, you know, you come out with a great result um, without too much headache. Yeah. And what we're saying slips an unrooted clone, just basically. unrooted clones. Yeah. How, how long do they last for? I mean, these last. Um, long, but... Yeah. I mean, they're usually good as long as there's no extreme temperature, like super hot or super cold. Uh, they're usually can be good for easily a, a week or more. Wow. Yeah, it just really depends on once you get deep into the summer, then you start to have heat be a problem. You'll start to see a lot more warranties come up. Um, and then in the winter, you're pretty good most places unless you're going to somewhere where it freezes. Wow. And there have been instances where uh, people are like, oh, yeah, I got them frozen, dead, frozen like a rock, <laughs> you know, and it's just if it froze, if it freezes up all the way, there's not a lot saving it. And then, you know, if it gets hot, they tend to just get mushy and there's no saving it. So, but either way, um, you know, delivery is, is overnight or, or usually about 48 hours. Um, and then we don't send anything out after Thursday because things on Friday get stuck, you know, increases the likelihood of people having a bad experience. So yeah, yeah it's like a Monday through Thursday kind of thing. Very interesting. The world is changing. Yep. <laughs> this was cool, man. This is cool. A couple of shout outs. Big, big words in the in the uh chat. Chad Westport. Huli. Hey, Huli. I like that, man. <laughs> I think Who I've been called. Any, any other shout outs? Uh, we got some smoky AMS. We got Wayne D. We got your mailman grows. We got mailman Not a just mailman. Popped in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, everybody, for uh, too many. For Definitely hanging out. It's a good time, man. Thanks yeah. for having me again. Yes, thank you, Grambo. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate you. Excellent, dude. I enjoyed this, man. Yes, yes. Stay higher, my friends. And uh, yeah, took away a few good notes to help out my pheno hunt for sure. So thanks, guys. I would S2 you. for you, dude. You're an S2 guy, man. <laughs> Grambo's all about the IBL. Uh, I'm a BX guy. <laughs> ah, you are BX. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, all y'all. Thank you. All right. One sec.